Hey everybody, it's Dr. Levitt here and I'm at my office. I'm feeling rather good about myself today because of an article I just read that validated and confirmed for me a clinical suspicion, something that I have observed in my clinical practice for many, many years. I have this article pulled up on my computer right behind me and I'm going to read the title of it for you now. Beware, a lot of scientific language here. The title of the article is Myeloid Differentiation Architecture of Leukocyte Transcriptome Dynamics in Perceived Social Isolation. Man, it's a mouthful. I had to read it. I couldn't possibly remember the title. Um, nonetheless, what is this article about? Simply stated, this article is about people who feel lonely, perceived social isolation, aka loneliness. We have known in science for a very long time that loneliness and social isolation is a risk factor for all sorts of medical problems, certainly depression and anxiety, but also things that you wouldn't think of like a cardiovascular disease and Alzheimer's viral infections and all sorts of different cancers are increased in people who feel lonely. So what this article did was classify the mechanisms, the underlying reasons why this phenomenon occurs. And what the researchers discovered is that people who feel lonely have an activation of their stress response, namely an increase in a neurochemical a hormone called norepinephrine, which is a a marker compound for the activation of the stress response. And we see that in people who feel more lonely, we see raised levels or increased levels of norepinephrine signaling that the stress response has become active. And we know that when the stress response is active, the immune system will deactivate. It will be less able to defend against viral infections and more prone to inflammatory disorders of all sorts. So we know that perceived social isolation or loneliness activates the stress response, and the stress response then promotes inflammatory reactions, decreases immunity with respect to viral infections, and so on down the line. So in this age of increased digital and social media connectivity, we understand that we sometimes feel connected to other people in this way, but social isolation is at all time highs these days and people feel more lonely than ever. So this article confirmed my suspicion that lonely people or people who feel lonely are the most difficult patients to treat, right? They increased risk for all sorts of other problems and their problems seem to last longer and be more severe than people who, uh, who feel very much part of, uh, of, a, of a family or a social group or a religious group or whatever the case may be. So I hope that this article, uh, which certainly confirmed and validated a hypothesis for me, can be a trigger for you to get out there and enjoy some time with family and with friends and with your social, with your social networks, real social networks, real people. So go out and have coffee or tea with a friend or enjoy family dinner this evening together uh, and you'll be reducing your risk for chronic disease across the board. So I hope that's helpful to you and take good care.